Contender Regime Boxing, checking back in with y'all, man. What's going on? So, Adrian Broner and Omar Figueroa are reportedly scheduled for a fight this summer, July 23rd, in Chicago, which I think is a fantastic location for this particular matchup. You got uh, Adrian Broner. He is from the Midwest, particularly Cincinnati. Um, Omar Figueroa from Texas, you know what I'm saying? I believe uh, San Antonio, Texas, somewhere uh, down south, uh, uh, south of Dallas, uh, and, you know, deep in the heart of Texas, man. And, uh, you know, but I think with Adrian Broner actually being the star of this particular bout, I think the location is really good. I really like this matchup. I really think that uh, this is going to be a very interesting match for a lot of different reasons. Um, Adrian Broner, of course, we all know the story of Adrian Broner, man, was highly touted, came into the game with a lot of talent, a lot of raw ability, not a lot of discipline, not a lot of focus, not a lot of dedication to his craft, you know, and seemed like Adrian Broner struggled and probably still is struggling with like who he really is as far as, you know, is he... Is he the fighter? Is he, you know, the entertainer? Is he, you know, the rapper, the club promoter, the comedian? Like, what is Adrian Broner? And, you know, all those things could be true. He could be all those things. But I think that's something that he struggled with over the course of his career. You know, but uh, nonetheless, he still was able to accomplish a lot of things in the sport. Uh, became a four-division world champion. I think he was the youngest to ever do that. Uh, which is phenomenal. And uh, one thing that you can't say about Adrian Broner is that he turned down fights. Uh, Adrian Broner never turned down no phase. He was always willing to take on the best competition, the toughest and strongest competition, you know, even to his detriment. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, taking on Marcos Maidana in his second fight at welterweight after you know, skipping over a whole weight class of 140, didn't even fight at 140, went straight from 135 to fight the one of the softest punchers in the in boxing history in Pauli Malignaggi. And then you go from that to Marcos Maidana, who at the time was probably the hardest puncher in the division. You know, uh, but that was Adrian Broner. At that time, he, you know, he put out a poll on Twitter he said, hey, man, uh, at, you know, uh, Lucas Matisse was another guy from Argentina who was hitting hard as fuck. But he said, hey, man, you know, who should I fight next? I want to fight these guys. These are the guys that the fans want to see me fight. And and people chose Marcos Maidana, and that's who he went out there and fought. You know, so Adrian Broner always get my respect for having that type of attitude. You know, even when he even though he do get in these fights and he don't let his hands go like he should. The fact that he willing to get in the ring with these dudes, man, that, that speaks volumes. You know what I'm saying? Um, Omar Figueroa, a very, very talented fighter, uh, really known out here in Texas. You know, made a, a name for himself coming up in the amateurs, man, was a very decorated amateur. And, um, you know, was undefeated up until his, his uh, last match against your Dennis Ugas. Uh, Ugas really dominated Omar Figueroa in that fight. I had never seen him get done like that. You know, Omar Figueroa, though he is a very talented fighter, he never really took that step up to fight the best competition. His first real, like, real, real, real test was Jordanus Ugas, and that was just too much for him. But, you know, he also had a lot of injuries throughout his career. I think that's one of the things that one of the things that kind of hindered him from uh, taking that extra step in his career. You know, he would take long layoffs. I just don't think Omar Figueroa was as active as he could have been or should have been in his career, and that really hurt him. You know, inactivity can really hurt a fighter, man. And you get in when you do get in there with somebody like a Jordanus Ugas, you know, it's hard to look good versus somebody like that who active, who is 
indeed an act like a really good fighter. You know what I'm saying? Very strong fighter, a physically imposing fighter. You know, you get in there with a guy like that who hungry, you know, and he want this shit, you know, and you've been out the ring for a year. You've been out the ring for two years. You battling injuries on and off. You know what I'm saying? So both of these guys have, you know, had, I would say, somewhat of a tough road throughout their career. You know, a lot of ups and downs. Adrian Broner, Adrian Broner more than Omar Figueroa. Uh, of course, Adrian Broner's story is more, um, I would say, it's more public and more open. You know what I'm saying? With him being the more popular fighter, you know, a larger than life type of character. You know what I'm saying? So, but this is a huge opportunity for both guys, man. I think both of these guys are, you know, very talented fighters. I think Omar Figueroa is the fresher guy uh, with him. I would say he took less damage in his career. He hadn't been in as many wars as Adrian Broner has. You know, only has the one loss to your Dennis Ugas. You know, uh, but he he's one of those fighters that he... Omar Figueroa loves wars, though. Like, even in the fights that he wins, he stands toe-to-toe -to -toe and he throws punches and bunches. He throws a lot of punches. You know, so he has been through, you know, some 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 tough fights. But he ain't, I don't think he's been in as many wars as Adrian Broner. So I think both of these guys being uh, uh, shop worn, you know, somewhat or so to speak, I think Omar Figueroa will be the, he's the fresher fighter. Like I said, both of these guys have ups and downs. Both of these guys have been dealing with things. But it's a great matchup. Uh, I think the location is dope because you're getting Adrian Broner in kind of like a hometown fight this is why i think this is one of the things that make this fight interesting it being in chicago because people gonna come out to see adrian Brown in chicago he gonna have a lot of people coming from cincinnati to see him he gonna have a lot of native chicagoans that's gonna come out there to see him and this is gonna be the type of crowd that that would kind of um motivate Adrian Broner to fight, to let his hands go. Number one, Omar Figueroa is going to be on his ass all night throwing punches and bunches, forcing the fight, forcing the action. So just off of the styles, Adrian Broner ain't going to have no choice but to let his hands go because if he don't, he going to get his ass whooped. I'm telling y'all that right now. If Adrian Broner going to this fight, trying to play defense and only throwing two, three punches around, he going to get his ass whooped because his defense ain't good enough. It it can be when he want it to be, but if he just going to sit back and lean back and, you know, do the, the same old, you know, shoulder roll, high guard bullshit every now and then and not throw no down punches, Omar Figueroa going to get on his ass. However, I can see Adrian Broner performing similar to how he did versus Emmanuel Taylor. And y'all know I love that fight. That's Probably my favorite Adrian Broner performance, the Emmanuel Taylor fight, one of them for sure. That fight was in Cincinnati. And, you know, he came out to uh, Young Thug, Rich Homie Quan, Birdman. They walked him out in Cincinnati. That was probably one of the best ring walks you'll ever see. Very entertaining. Um, and that was just, that fight was extremely competitive and action-packed. And Emmanuel Taylor was one of those guys who was hungry, who had nothing to lose, who saw Adrian Broner as an opportunity or a stepping stone to elevate his name and get in the limelight. So he brought he brought everything he possibly could to try to take Adrian Broner out. And that forced Adrian Broner to let his hands go. Also, being at home, he didn't want to go out like that. So you saw Adrian Broner in that fight take it to a whole nother level. I mean, the Emmanuel Taylor fight with Adrian Broner is probably the most impressive performance to me because you actually saw the levels. You saw you saw Emmanuel Taylor bring things out of Adrian Broner that I don't think outside of Marcos Maidana, because if you go back and watch the second half of the Marcos Maidana fight, Adrian Broner, he was fighting like a motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? He was fighting. And he, he was forced to do that, though, or else he was going to get stopped. 
Emmanuel Taylor did the same thing. But in this fight, of course, Emmanuel Taylor ain't Marcos Maidana. And this fight was at 140. So Adrian Broner, his, you know, his flurries and combinations and, you know, it, it stood out even more in this fight. You know what I'm saying? And it was way more effective. And you actually saw those levels in that fight. I think you can possibly get a similar type of matchup in this fight because he going to be at he basically at home. He fighting against a guy like Omar Figueroa who going to bring that action, who going to throw punches, who got power. And he going to be forced to fight. And I don't think he going I don't think he just going to fold like that. I think this going to be one of them situations where Adrian Broner willing to go out on this shield and he might have to, you know, if it go down like that. You did what I'm saying? So this is going to be a very interesting fight. Um, I'm actually excited about this because I'm a fan of Adrian Brown. I'm a fan of Omar Figueroa. I like both of these guys. Um, I really like Omar Figueroa's style. Always fun to watch. And when Adrian Brona actually does decide to fight, man, he's an exciting fighter to watch. But, I mean, we ain't seen that in years. You know what I'm saying? So, y'all let me know what y'all think down in the comments. How do y'all feel about this? Uh, this match, I think it's supposed to be July 23rd. You know, uh, how y'all feel about this? Adrian Broner versus Omar Figueroa. Is this a good match? Um, are you anticipating this fight? Who you think gonna win? Who you think got the edge going into this fight? You know what I'm saying? Let me know what y'all think, man. Contender Regime Boxing. I'll holler at y'all boys, man.